And we're back for another day on the ice. I uh, stayed in Kamloops last night and I uh, decided to get breakfast at the hotel so I didn't get going as early as I would have liked to. So what I planned to do was hit Stump Lake this morning. But since that, you know, was a little bit further away, I thought, hey, why not come right up here to Edith Lake? It's only 15 minutes away. Nobody's here today. I see lots of action on the ice. Lots of holes. People fish this lake all the time. It's a great lake close to town. Has surprisingly big fish in it. They're a little bit hard to catch sometimes. But hey, this is one of the first lakes that I ice fished around here in BC. And I did really good. I have a few crazy good videos from this lake from several years ago. Never really had fishing like that again. But usually catch some fish. So I'm going to fish here for a couple hours, first light, and then I'll head over to Stump Lake, try to get my limit of kokanee in the middle of the day, and then run over maybe to another lake for a brook trout in the evening. Stick around, it should be a fun one. I've never fished in this spot before, but I always see people fishing here. And I think even like fishing with rod, fished with kitty here once. I drilled holes in a line, checked the depth, down to seven to eight feet, and that's where I'm going to start with the jaw jacker. Then I'll pop some more holes, I'll get the underwater camera ready, I'll put it down the hole. We can see if there's any fish swimming around. Jigging jaw jackers are easy to use. Just pop up the lower legs and uh, leave the legs closed. I see some people extend the legs on the jigging jaw jacker. No need to extend the legs on the Jigging Jaw Jacker. I am using a 29 inch Jigging Jaw Jacker rod. Yeah, the 29 inch. And I have a little Fluger reel on it. And I'm gonna use this little peach color blob with half a mealworm, because I like the juices flowing out good. Set the blob as horizontal as possible. This is just tied on a number 10 scud hook. See if any fish are coming around. Now I think the trout really shut off the last few days. It was great action on the weekend. Everyone was catching trout everywhere. And then this weather system moved through, so I don't know if the trout are gonna be biting, but we'll try. Oh, there's one down there. There's a fish down there. There's a fish down there. We might be in luck. I just saw a fish. Fish was right close to the bottom, maybe like a foot off. So we'll just put this right in that zone, right in front of their face. They bite. Well, maybe there's gonna be some fish around today. That's three I saw swim by and I didn't even have the hook down there. So that's always a good sign. You know, you're in a good zone. Hopefully they keep coming through. Maybe a few will bite, okay? Edith Lake, stick around for a few minutes and we'll go hop around to some other lakes. We got long days here at the end of February. Doesn't get dark till 6 p.m. So we're out here at 7 a.m. Fish 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. today. Should be a fun day. There we go. We got one. We got one. That didn't take long at all. We got rainbow trout number one on the blob. I think I'll keep that one. That's a decent sized keep. You can keep two rainbow trout here. And you're allowed to keep five brook trout. They're coming through pretty good. That didn't take long at all. That's funny, after those initial couple fish I caught on this jaw jacker didn't go off again. So I'm gonna take it off and go around with my jigging rod and a little spoon and see if I catch one, okay? Just gonna pull this out of the water. Let's take a downhole look to see what's going on this day. You'll see I have multiple rainbow trout and brook trout Coming through to take a look at my spoon and presentation. Right here, I just pulled the spoon out of the water and check out the size of this brook trout swimming slowly by. You can actually see his mouth open up and close as he's probably picking off small insects and paying little attention to my spoon. But right as he goes by, I drop my spoon back down with fresh bait. And look, he comes back from the right-hand side of the screen pretty quickly 
but then he ignores it, veering off towards the bottom of the hole. Here comes another small brook trout in and inhales it. The smaller brook trout quite often are more aggressive. Meanwhile, the larger rainbow trout just cruise on through like that one did. Here's another couple rainbow trout that come on in. Usually when they have competition, one will take a swipe at it. This is actually the blob on a jaw jacker. That rainbow trout was hooked, but he unfortunately got off before I got to the hook. That was another rainbow trout just cruising through the open screen. And I want to put this shot in so you can see why I break the mealworms in half. It dumps tons of proteinaceous material out when you break that mealworm and put it on your hook. I didn't know this, but quite a few large rainbow trout were coming through this day taking a look at my presentation. Okay, back to fishing. I got him, I got him. Oh, little brook trout. Little brook trout. I don't think they're in really shallow in three feet. It seems like this seven to ten foot range seems the best. Check out that beautiful big rainbow trout, Panask. Must be almost four pounds on the blob, on the jigging jaw jacker. I was gonna pack up to go to Stump Lake and boom, this one hit and took off. Nice big panask. Came around and smoked that blob. Yeah, there she goes. Boom, gone. I was just packing up because I wanna to go to um, Stump Lake catch some kokanee this afternoon and I already landed a whole bunch of small brook trout and rainbow trout. I must have caught about eight or ten small brookies and rainbows. I wasn't filming, no need to put that on the video, but lots of fish here at Edith Lake to be caught by everyone. You know it's nice and close to town and there's some really big fish like that rainbow and that rainbow will still be in here in case you want to come around. So. Just a pink blob fly, two feet or a foot off the bottom, and jigging jaw jacker did did the job. It's almost 10 o'clock, and fishing is pretty good. Lots of fish coming through. Missed that one. There you have it, my limit of Edith Lake rainbow trout. Let go of that bigger one after I caught these two. Kept these two. Good, always good to let the bigger ones go. And uh, you're allowed to keep one over 50 centimeters though. And then the rest, remember, have to be under 50 centimeters. So these are around, you know, 16 and a half, 17 inches. That's a good size to keep always. Uh, they have really nice red meat inside. Tasty little Panask rainbow trout for dinner. Okay, that was a good morning bite out here at Edith Lake. But it's time to move to the next fishery. So let's go. Get a move on. Head to the next lake. Okay, we're back to Stump Lake and it's crazy hot, sun shining, no wind. What a beautiful day. Hopefully some coconut coming through. We're gonna find them. The hole I fished the other day is still here. There we go. There we go. We got one on. Good one. This is a pretty big fish. Maybe a big rainbow. Oh, 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 that was a big rainbow. Lost it right there in the hole. Just found out why I lost that big bow. Straighten the hook out just a little bit. Or a big kokanee. 
but it came up like that. Oh, he's right there. Oh yeah, that's a big rainbow. A little smaller than the first one I lost, but that's a beauty. Look at that one, gorgeous rainbow. <laughs> This is what it looks like down the hole at Stump Lake with all these red flakes representing Daphnia that the kokanee like to eat. This is a Williams whitefish flashing spoon that I use. It works great for kokanee and what you want to do is flick it really hard and get it to flutter like that to send off a lot of flash to the surrounding area to bring in the kokanee. The tungsten jig below stays well away from the flasher so it doesn't get tangled. So you have two rigs set up because when you break one off, you get the other one down on the school. I couldn't uh, help but notice your prowess there. My what? Your prowess. Prowess? <laughs> pretty prowess as far as the pretty amazing uh, results there. <laughs> Help, it's uh, 40 years of experience. What I've it's, noticed, are you going down? And then I'm going kind of all break? the way down to 60 feet and up. And I just go up and down, and when one comes in, then I just work it. Oh, so you're actually seeing them? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, there was oh, one just right okay. down there. Right oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need this. Like, otherwise, you can't catch them. Is that right? Yeah. Because yeah. even when they're there, they won't bite unless you get them to chase. So they'll, they'll chase it up like 20 feet sometimes yeah. before they hit. Yeah, yeah. And then when I see them go down, I drop it back down to them, and then they come back. Oh, so, so you can work them for like, see, there's one, one right there and one right there right now. So are they one, flashing? So that's 40 feet down. There's another one at 60 oh, feet down. Okay. So then I, if you're up here, you won't catch that guy, but I can drop down to that guy. Yeah, I can see so like this is a trip. fish coming up to my hook right now. You okay. see it coming up? Yeah, yeah. So then I know it's coming. So then you can start pulling it away and see what's following. There we go. We got one. That time I just let it sit still and boom, he hit. It's on the 7 millimeter tungsten. They're a little bit fussier with that one. They don't want to hit it as much. Finally, that seven millimeter tungsten got one. Okay, so it's 1 p.m. right now. I have one more kokanee to go. So we'll keep the next one, and then hopefully we'll run to another lake for the evening fish, maybe to a brook trout lake, and hopefully get some brook trout. I have three rainbows on the ice, four kokanee. So I have a limit of one more kokanee and two more trout. So it'd be cool to go catch a brook trout on the same day. Seems like the fish are really biting today. So hopefully this, it happens this evening on Brook Trout Lake. Pretty good. Quick afternoon limit. Okay, so people want to know sometimes what exactly am I doing to catch these fish? Because as you saw earlier, a guy came over to check it out. They have not been catching anything all day, and somehow I come out in the afternoon and can catch fish. So I'll give you my tips and hopefully you can translate them into some success for yourself, okay? Number one, all of my tips require a sonar. So if you don't have a sonar, then it's gonna be really hard to do what I'm going to explain because sonar is the key element to everything I do. So when you're using a sonar, you I set it, I'm in 80 foot of depth. I set it to the 80 
or to the 40 or to the 20 depends on how you know where the fish are if the fish are up right under the ice I'll set it only to the 20 foot uh, depth range if the fish are down deeper I'll set it to the 40 and if they're any way down to like 60 70 feet I'll put it right to the 80 these Markhams have a setting down to 160 feet but I find the marks get too squished together when you have it set down that deep and it's not really that effective at separating your targets when you put it to 160 feet. So even if you're near 120 feet of water, just set it to the 80 because most times kokanee aren't down further than 80 feet deep. I mean, the odd time I've caught them at 90 feet. If you're not seeing anything above 80, then you can switch it to that, but uh, use that as last resort. So I have it set to the 80 foot mark and uh, then I just work the water column. I start from the top and I work my way down and I watch the screen for any kind of movement, any mark that could be a fish. And when I see that, I drop my rig down to the fish just above them and I wait to see if that mark engages with my presentation. If that mark starts moving up to my presentation and turns green and orange and red, then I, need, I know it's a fish and it's coming in to take a look. And uh, so to keep those fish engaged, you want to keep them coming towards your lure. So I trigger a bite by slowly pulling it away from them and I, you can actually see them following your hook and wait for that bite. You can jiggle it a little bit and if they disengage and start swimming down, let it flutter back, back down to them. I just let the reel flutter back down and then you'll see all of a sudden they'll turn back towards it and then you stop it and then you start the game of cat and mouse again. And it's just that up and down motion that really entices those fish to bite because sometimes I work a fish for a few minutes before it bites or you wait until another fish comes and joins the chase and then once there's two they're usually more aggressive and will bite. So it's that up and down motion and sometimes I'll come up like 20 feet, 30 feet with the fish chasing. I'll go up as long as the fish will chase. There's no like magic number. As long as he's chasing I'll keep going up and if a fish is not chasing I'll just keep it down at that level where he's at and just slight movements. Some days when they're not really aggressive, they want to just barely move it. You can pause it for a second and sometimes they'll bite right when you pause it. You gotta remember when you're using the jigging spoon and fluttering it, that spoon will kick out to the side and then it'll slowly drift to the, to the center again. And as it's drifting to the center, the fish will chase it and grab it. So even though it feels like you aren't moving the rod, that little bit of a drift and sway of the spoon when it's down 40, 60 feet will trigger a bite because it's just swimming to the side. Another tip is when you're down like 40 to 60 feet, it's sometimes hard to feel a bite. And using these large spoons, I use a stiffer rod. This is a circle tackle walleye X-Fast rod. You see, even with that big spoon on there, I got a pretty straight to my tip, so I'm not using a rod that's bent over like this because it minimizes the feel of the bites, right? So stiffer rod will actually help you when you're in deeper water fishing for this kokanee with a big heavy flasher on top because they tend to bite pretty light and pretty quick, so you got to be ready for them. Next thing is Power Pro Braid. I actually think this is like fire line, power, uh, 10 pound fire line maybe. I put about six feet of eight pound fluorocarbon bump tied to this braid but uh, then I'll have my spoon and then a few inches of fluorocarbon six pound test. That's pretty much my setup for getting down to the fish. This is set up with a KY 1000 reel by Circle Tackle as well. These reels are really affordable and uh, have a really nice drag for I think they're at 30 bucks, 35 bucks or something. So sometimes you have to pay a lot of money for a nice smooth drag, but this one is a nice drag even in cold weather. Oh, there's a fish, there's a fish. Let's see if we can work him up. So he just came up above me. He's actually... There he is. See that? I was just pulling away slowly and you could see the bite. I just pulled away a little bit at a time and uh, got that fish to bite. So this is a kokanee, so I'm just going to flip them off in the hole so don't lose any scales. And there we go. Just like that. So while I was doing my description, it worked in action. Just slowly pull away from him and uh, get him to bite. I wanted to give a demonstration on this deeper chirp sonar to show how it works out here, but unfortunately, it's dead. There, did you see that bite? See that bite? See, even though you got a stiffer rod, slower presentation. 
Oh, that's a good fighter right there. You don't need a super soft rod, but these Walleye X-Fast have a nice, long, easy bend to them. So even though it's a stiffer rod, it's helpful in catching these beautiful kokanee. Oh, that's a big one. Let's keep my hole here. I'll take them off. There you go. Hooks out. Fish is gone. That's enough kokanee for today. Let's go try to catch big brook trout tonight, okay? And there's my catch here today at um, Stump Lake. I usually just get them on the ice, feed the ravens and the eagles. I just cut the gills out and cut the guts out. And that's how I keep them nice and fresh. Just like that. Got the cavity, cut the gills out. There you go. We made it out to the third and final lake. Hopefully I don't get skunked on this lake. I picked a tough one. Lots of red-sided shiners in here, but there are some big brook trout. Looks like there's been heavy traffic on this lake. I see lots of areas where guys have set up tents here. And uh, so who knows, we'll see. I've already been marking lots of shiners down there, but the brook trout tend to just come through when they want and slam your lure if they're in the feeding mode. So we shall see, stick around. This is the final lake for the day. Three lakes, one day. Did really well on the first two lakes, so hopefully at least catch one fish here, okay? Check it out, lake number three just caught another brook trout. Well, that's it for my adventure today. Thanks for following me around on three different lakes. I hope you enjoyed that. Turned out it was great weather today and the fish were biting, so that's always a plus. Evening bite wasn't crazy here on uh, Cane Valley. I came to look for some brook trout. All I caught was one, about 14 inches, and that's it. I think today was a great day, caught lots of fish, fish were biting well. Uh, evening bite doesn't always pay off out here at this lake. I had three other bites, but they didn't stick, so that's fishing. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share it with a friend if you'd like. Great fishing up here. Good luck when you get out here, and God bless. Go catch a big one. Thanks for watching as always. See you later. Oh